Hello again, we are graphing linear equations. What we had just done was figured out uh, horizontal and vertical graphs. Uh, horizontal graphs y equaling the number and vertical graphs x equaling the number. What we're going to do now is graph linear equations using the intercept method. Now when I had done these problems before, what I had told you to do was solve for y, get y by itself, and then make a table of five values. And that was before that lesson with the x and the y. I'm telling you though, that there are methods, there are two main methods that you can use where you don't have to make tables for linear functions. In fact, you don't really ever have to make a table again after these two methods. It's fantastic. And I remember when I first learned this method, and it's usually the first method taught of the two in my math class many years ago, mind you. And uh, my teacher had shown me, you know, wow, she was like six foot six, giant. Uh, that's not really important, but she had shown me. I said, whoa, I don't have to make tables anymore? I can do this without making tables? And she said, yes. I'm like, okay, yeah. I'm never going to make a table again in my life. I am never going to use any method other than that. Just I'm going to use this method to grab all the your functions. I am so super excited. I guess it didn't take me too much to get excited if math problems were one of those aspects. But my teacher had said, well, you know, there is another method that we're going to learn, and we're going to have to learn it after this one. I'm like, no, I don't want to learn any other method. This is perfect. Well, the other method I'm going to show you, even though this one seems uh, relatively easy, uh, is actually, in my opinion, the better of the two methods. Uh, it is more difficult to learn initially, but it's pretty cool. But with that said, I want to show you this method first, and this is something that you can practice if you see a problem like this. And this problem you use when you have something in standard form. And what I mean by that is, you have it in this form, ax plus by equals c, where x and y are on one side of the equation, and everything without an x and a y are on the other side. And we've accomplished that. x and y are on one side of the equation, bam, and the number without an x and a y is the other. And that's what c stands for. It's just, you know, uh, like 8 or 23 or negative 22, anything without an x or a y. And we've already done that here. And I'm telling you that we can graph both of these without making a table, without plotting points, without putting them into equations. And if you become proficient at this, you can probably finish these two problems in mm, 23 seconds, 24 seconds, you know, about 11 and a half to 12 seconds per problem. You think I might be lying there, but I'm not. We're not going to take 11 seconds to solve the problem. We're going to go through it. And here's how you do the problem. What you do is you create two points for the graph. And the reason why you create two points for this equation and two points for this equation, pardon me, I should also write graph. That's essentially what I want you to do. Why I want you to do that is because once you have two points on an equation, you just connect them, you got your line. That's all you have to do. You only actually need two points to graph a line. You know, If I want to make a line, well, I've got one point right here, as long as I get my other point in, I just connect the dots, Woo! I'm done. Well, something like that. Here's how we're going to do it though. And it's called the intercept method. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to find the x-intercept and the y-intercept of the graph. And don't get scared if, if that doesn't make sense just yet. I promise you it will. Here's how we do it. We're going to create two points where on one of the points we're going to set the x equal to 0. And on the other point, we're going to set the y equal to 0. And here's what my teacher did, which was really cool. And it didn't require a calculator, and we didn't have to sit down and write it. Although, if you didn't know how to do it off the top of your head, you do have to write it. So with that said, if you set the x equal to 0, what's your point going to be? Now here's what my teacher did, and I, I thought it was the best thing since sliced bread. She covered up the x, and she said, 2y equals 4. So 2 times what number equals 4? Now some of you out there are saying, ah, oh, it's 2. Some of you might say, well, what do I do? I divide by 2 on both sides, y equals 2. So one of my points for this equation, in order to graph it, is 0 comma 2. But if I try that for the x, let me try that for the y. Now I have x equals 4. Do I have to solve any more than that? The answer is no. Once I cover up the 2y, I don't have to divide or subtract anything. It's already there. So x equals 4. Let me show you that again, actually, because 
I just have a feeling that some people would find that confusing. You cover up the x when x is 0. Because if you substitute in 0, x doesn't matter. And you have 2y equals 4. 2 times what equals 4 and y equals 2. If you substitute in the 0 for the y, 2 times y is 0, and that goes away. Now you just have x, well, you can get rid of that plus sign, that's inconsequential. x equals 4. You have enough points to graph a line. You don't need five different sets to graph a line. Why, why did you make me do that? Because it builds character. It makes you more of a man or a woman, depending if you're a man or a woman watching, or a young girl or young boy, or boy or girl, female or male watching this. That's what I used to hear too. Why, why do I have to do yard work? Because it makes you a man. Now be quiet and do it. So, the same thing. Why do I have to graph five points? Because it makes you a better person. It builds character. Do it. So here you go. Zero comma two is my first point. So, I want to plot zero two. So I start on the origin. And I go 0, 2. Well, I'm not going anywhere on the x, but I'm going 2 on the y. Okay, now I want to plot 4, comma, 0. Not going anywhere on the y. This is a discrete function if I don't connect it, and it's discrete because, you know, Little points doing what he's doing by himself, and you know, nothing's held accountable, nobody's watching him. And it's called continuous once you connect it. Hey, that's a pretty good line there. I'm not even the use of a straight edge. So I connect this, and now it's a continuous function. I just graphed this, x plus 2y equals 4. This is my first one. This is x plus 2y equals 4. I did that. Just like that. And if I wasn't sitting here explaining it, and I just did it really quickly, it literally would have taken me maybe 11 and a half seconds. And that's a maybe. And it will take you 11 and a half seconds too if you practice it. So, here we go. That's my graph. This point right here is called the y-intercept. And it's called the y-intercept because it intercepts against the y-axis. It actually connects with the y-axis. That's why it's called the y-intercept. See? You know, if it, if it hit right here, this is nothing. It's just a point. But since it hits on the y-axis, it's called the y-intercept. Well, what do you think that one's called? It's called the x-intercept because it hits the x-axis. Now, last thing I want to talk about really quickly is domain and range. Because I do think it's important because I think that a lot of students will not get it right if you don't practice it. So, I'm going to put D for domain and R for range. And what's awesome is that since this is on video, you can't say, I didn't know D stood for domain and R stood for range because I just said so. Now, when it comes to domain, my domain is my x values. Well, how far do the x values go this way? And you look at it kind of slant and say, I don't know. Well, if this graph keeps going, how far will it go this way? And, you know, it goes on to a million, negative a million. Now, try a little bit higher. Negative a billion? Negative quintillion? No. Negative sep No. It goes on forever. And you can't identify forever, or you can't write forever in mathematical terms unless you write it as negative infinity. How far does it go that way? It goes on forever. Now, some people might argue this, but how low does the graph go? Well, if this goes on forever, the graph's going to continue doing this and this and this and this. And it won't ever reach its bottom. It'll just keep going and going and going. There's a number for that. Or well, there's a, an idea for that, actually. And how high does the graph go? It goes to infinity, of course. There you go. Domain and range. But like I said, for any slanted linear function, anything that's slanted, I'm not talking about up and down, left and right, your domain and your range are automatically nah, negative infinity to infinity, negative infinity to infinity. It's not even really a question of getting to it. Now, some people say, well, what's the domain and range of a, of a vertical or a horizontal graph? Well, on a horizontal graph, the domain is forever, and the range is only that particular point it's on. 
So if it's on 3, range is only 3. Uh, for a vertical graph, your domain is just that particular point it's on, on the x-axis, but the range extends forever. Now you're infinity, infinity. Should have actually done that with that, but maybe I thought that was a little too difficult. Anyways, let's do this second example. I want to use the intercept method, which means I want to figure out the x-intercept and the y-intercept. Let me say this again. If you want to figure out the x-intercept and y-intercept, you've got to plug in or substitute in the number 0. So I'm going to substitute in 0 for the x and 0 for y on the other coordinate. Now, if I cover up the x, I've got negative 2y equals 10. Divide by negative 2 on both sides, y equals negative 5. Cover up the y, and i got 4x equals 10, because my y will be 0 on this one. 4x equals 10. 10 divided by 4 is 5 halves. 5 divided by 2 is 2.5. Let me use this marker for the second one. So 0, negative 5. Right there. 2.50. 1, 2, oh, I wish, I wish I could graph 2.5. It's in between 2 and 3. Connect. That's pretty good, too. There you go. The domain, the x will keep going this way and this way. If the graph keeps going, it will keep going in that direction, and it will keep going in that direction. I know it's slanted, but... I know it's slanted, but it'll keep going. And the range, it keeps going up, and it keeps going down. So your domain and range, pardon, there was somebody there telling me to uh, lower my voice, so that was the interruption there. There you go, your domain and range. Simple as that. That is graphing using the intercept method. With that said, have a great day. Goodbye.